Hi there, my name is Diane, but you can just call me D. Today and over the next three days, I guess, I'm gonna be uh, vlogging my experience doing the $1,000 uh, readathon hosted by Drinking by Michelle and Meg with Books and T Books and Tasman. It's a really fun idea. Uh, it's kind of choose your own adventure. So basically you start with a prompt, you read the book and then you come back to the video and they will ask you a question based on the book you just read. And then you can click on another video uh, based on your answer and that will give you a new prompt. So it's really fun. All right, so I have decided to go with uh, Drinking by Michelle first video. So let's watch what the prompt is about. The doors are open! The Thousand Doors Readathon is officially underway. If you've just landed here and you've got no idea what this means, I will link below to my original announcement video for what the Thousand Doors Readathon is. This is a special little weekend edition after we did the main one last year. The Readathon is going to be running for the next three days all the way up until the end of the weekend. I will now give you a really quick reminder of the format before I set you off with your first prompt. Uh, if you want to know how it actually works, I will link all their videos down below, but I already know how it works, so I'm going to skip that. Oh, I should say, each of the hosts have different themes for their prompts. My theme throughout this readathon is going to be games. So all of my prompts will be themed around games. As you know, I just love playing board games. Me too. <laughs> I'm excited. As prompt, we're going to play a little mini game of Articulate. We're not actually going to play, but we are going to roll the dice and move around the board and figure out what our first prompt is going to be that way. Okay, I landed on nature, so the first prompt is going to be... Ooh, I love nature, that's awesome. Owl. The word owl. All of our prompts are deliberately left super open for you to interpret them however you want. So you might want to read a book with the word owl in the title, with an owl on the cover. Maybe you want to read a book about wisdom. You can really decide however you want to use this. What am I going to read with this? So what are you waiting for? Go, go, go. Go and choose your owl book. Don't forget to bookmark this video because once you've finished your book or decided to DNF your book, come back and answer the question that I'm going to pose next. All right, so I'm really excited. So owl, there's one book I need to fit in this vlog because it's due on Sunday. Um, so let me go get it and I think I can make it work. Uh, this book is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Am I being a little bit ambitious reading a book of over 450 pages for this readathon, knowing that that takes me at least a week usually? Yeah, 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 I'm being a bit amb ambitious. But I do have the audiobook also. I really like uh, mixing the audiobook and the physical book together. I feel like I get immersed in the book much more rapidly and I get invested in the story more rapidly too. Because sometimes some books take a while to get into the story and I kind of zone out. It doesn't make me want to pick them up. Yeah, so I have that. So I think I should be able to do it. The other book is 15 hours. Depending on how I feel about this book, uh, I might go back to the video and kind of go ahead and answer the question anyway, even if I didn't finish the book yet and continue reading this book throughout. Uh, for the next books that I have in mind, uh, I want that I want to read, they're gonna be all quite short, so it'll be easier. <laughs> I'm super excited to start with this one. It's a bit later, but I realized that I never mentioned how Owl related to the book I picked, so I thought I would just pop in and tell you why I thought I would pick this one. It's because Owl is a bird, a bird has feathers, and there are feathers on the cover. <laughs> That's about it. I, th I think it fits. <laughs> I've made some strawberry muffins like two days ago or something, so I'll include the footage right now. 
and also I was reading American Gods which I'm still reading I'm almost done with it I only have like I think a hundred pages left I'll kind of clean up my space and try to finish that audiobook before I start on this one Alright, so this is the third day of the readathon. I haven't updated yet, but I did finish City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. And uh, this was a chunker, this was 470 pages or something like that. And I gave it four stars. It's basically this old woman, Vivian, who tells her life story to someone. I think it's been compared to The Seven Lives of Evelyn Hugo, which I haven't read. When the story starts, Vivian is kicked out of her university and she is sent to her aunt in New York and her aunt has a theater. Vivian has always been really good with sewing, so she becomes the costumer. She makes a mistake that has some important repercussions and she has to face them. She always had an easy life. So what I like about the book is that the pacing is very interesting and reminiscent of a life really because at the beginning she's very innocent and it's very light and then she gets into a little bit of trouble and then she gets through more hurdles and she experiences a lot of hurt at the end she's more someone who's accepted who she is who she wants to be and that ends up being comfortable with her life this is historical fiction nothing really happens it just takes you through the life of this woman it's not like she really had any major things happen to her but it is still interesting. I know that this book has a lot of underlying um, feminist message and empowerment, so I really enjoyed that about the book. It's a bit boring at points, but if you listen to the audiobook while you're reading, I think it really helps, uh, which it did for me. So I think it's a good book. There's actually, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's a good book. I enjoyed my time with it. The historical fiction is not something that I really go for, so. I think it was good. All right, I forgot to plug my mic in for this update, so great, but now it is in. All right, let's see what the next prompt is. I'm excited. Okay, my first question is, how did you enjoy this book? I'm gonna give you three options to click. Either you gave the book a four or a five stars, it was really successful. Second option, you gave the book one to three stars, it was okay, or maybe outright terrible, and the third option is that you decided to DNF the book. You can now click on your answer to go through the next door and receive your next prompt. Obviously, I give it four stars, so I'm going to click on that one. Welcome back! You got me <laughs> again. again! I am so glad that you so enjoyed your last book. That is great news. So let's see if I can do just as well and give you a prompt for a second book that you're also going to enjoy. 
So the next game we're going to play, this is Dixit. You might not have heard of this one. It's not as popular a game as Articulate, but it's very sweet and very wholesome. It all revolves around telling stories around pictures. So I'm going to randomly select one of these cards and that is going to make up our next prompt. So this is the one. Here you go. So I'll let you have a look at it and I'll also try and describe it for anyone who is visually impaired at all. So this is a picture of, let me have a closer look myself. This is a picture of a tree with a very subtle face you can see on the trunk. It is smiling. It also has an anchor tattoo sort of on its shoulder is what it looks like. One of the branches looks like an arm and that's where the anchor tattoo is. Tucked underneath that arm is a bouquet of really pretty flowers. Behind the tree we see blue sky, green grass, and in front of the tree we see a cobbled path. So I think that's quite a calming image. I think it's quite a hopeful image. I think there's a touch of romance. I'm kind of imagining this tree on the way to give these flowers to someone that they are romantically interested in maybe. Those are the kind of vibes I'm getting, but you really can interpret this however you want. You might see it as an evil tree on its way to trick someone with a murder weapon hidden in the flowers. I don't know, you do you. So off you go and choose a book to fit that next prompt. I don't think I have any idea of what I'm gonna choose, so let me uh, figure that out. I think I figured it out. I think I'm gonna read Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a short story and it's basically about someone writing to someone else about how both of their spouses uh, cheated on them. It's really high, highly rated and I have it on my prime reading for free basically so I'm definitely gonna read it and see if it's that well written and also it makes me read some Taylor Jenkins read which I've been wanting to read it's just that her ideas are usually not something I'm interested in. I know that she writes really well, so I've always wanted to check out her stories. First, I'm gonna be making some pancakes and then I'll settle down and eat my breakfast while I read this short story. Hopefully I get it done today. I'm thinking of maybe prolonging this readathon until tomorrow because I've been a little bit busy the past two days, so it just feels like I didn't have enough time, especially like I read this huge book and I needed to read the book, but it wasn't really the point. I wanted to read some short stories and short novelas, so who knows, maybe, we'll see. Alright, so I finished uh, Evidence of the Affair, which fitted the pump really, really well because on the cover there is a tree and there's some water, uh, which reminds me of the um, Angkor Hadu. So this was a pretty good short story, it was well written, the story was told in letters, so it was easy to read, the format was well done. I enjoyed it, I mean, it's pretty short, so I don't really know how to rate short stories but i would say it's between a three and a four like it's good i mean it's not like you have time to really care for the characters but it's still uh you know was emotional and stuff so good one so now let's see what the next prompt is gonna be and you're back i'm assuming you are here because you have finished the book so i have one more question to ask you that last book that you just read was the ending satisfying i'm gonna give you the option to click yes it was no, it wasn't, or to say that you DNF'd the book and so you didn't get that far, which is always good with me. I'm very pro DNFing. So the doors are now available for you to go through. So the ending was definitely satisfying, I would say. All right, so what is the new prompt now?
Welcome to your third door, your prompt for book three. Not only was the ending to your last book satisfying, but you seem to have pretty much have enjoyed every book you've read so far, which we love to see. I'm so happy for you. I hope that I am the same way. You haven't had me yet, so all of my prompts are in the form of reaction videos or memes, the kind of clips I put in my videos. I'll give you some tips on how to interpret it, but you might need to do but you by no means have to follow this tip. You can make up anything you want from the prompt. It's totally up to you. So your prompt is... I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. So from this, the first thing that comes to mind for me is a mystery or a thriller book, something where you're trying to figure out something and connect the dots. But truly, almost every book has some element of mystery. That's what keeps a plot going forward. So you could really bend this to any book where you need to connect the dots on some form of plot that is happening in the book. It could just be a book that has dots on the cover. I don't know how many books have dots on the cover, but you can, listen, anything, anything can work. <laughs> or it could just be a book that seems super clever and makes you think you figured it out when really you haven't. Now, bookmark this video, go ahead and pick a book based on this prompt then come back here to click on this video once you've finished the book. Alright, so I think I found the right book. Uh, I think I'm gonna read The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis uh, Stevenson. So on Goods it says that it is a lawyer, a uh, London lawyer investigating strange occurrences between his old friend Dr. Jekyll and the evil Mr. Hyde. So I'll be interested in reading that one. It's about 93 pages, so hopefully I should get it done by today. And I think that's actually the last prompt I will get, because then I just finished the, the readathon. So that's pretty, pretty exciting. I've never really participated like that um, in a readathon. That's kind of my first time. So I'm excited to finish something. And yeah, and I'm excited to read that book, obviously. finally finished my last book for this readathon uh, last night but I was a bit tired so I thought I would update now. So the book I was reading was The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I think that's how you say it. This was only a hundred, about a hundred pages. It was for the prompt to connect the dots. Meg had said it could be a mystery or something like that. In this story there's this lawyer who's friends with uh, Dr. Jekyll and strange things are happening um, between his friend and Mr. Hyde and he's trying to investigate and connect the dots. I don't think I've ever been spoiled or if I have been spoiled, I forgot about it. So this was actually really enjoyable to read because I didn't know what this was about. The story was intriguing and I just wanted to keep on reading and to see what was going to happen and what was the explanation of it all. Um, so I had so much fun up until the ending. The ending was a little bit stretched out and it felt a little bit long, but it could be also that I was tired. So the writing is older English, so it is a little bit hard as a non-native speaker to grasp everything. So I had to read it a bit more slowly but there are a lot of nice quotes from this book that you can find also i would say that the message of the book it's pretty clear it's not something uh, that you have to think much about it's really obvious and it is told to you multiple times my favorite quote is probably going to be this one if he be mr hyde he had thought i shall be mr sick and I thought it was really funny. Because of the ending that took a while to unfold, even though you knew 
where it was going. I would say so 3.75. So to summarize, I've read three books. For the first prompt, which was Owl, I read City of Girls by Elizabeth uh, Gilbert because Owl made me think of birds, which made me think of feathers, and there's uh, feathers on the cover. I gave it four stars. For the second prompt, I got the drawing of a tree that had an anchor tattooed on its arm and was holding flowers. So that made me think of something romantic. So for this, I read Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave it around 3.5 stars. For my last prompt, I got Connecting the Dot. It could be interpreted as a mystery, some investigating or something like that. So for this one, I read The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I gave this one 3.75. So in terms of uh, pages, I read around 643 pages which is pretty cool. My average rating ended up being around 3.75, which is really high. I really enjoyed everything I read. It just makes you want to continue this momentum. It so that's it. That's the end of this vlog for the $1,000 readathon. I'm super excited that I participated in it. It was so much fun getting to the prompts and this idea is just so well thought out and the execution of the readathon was so well done so props to the hosts uh, i will link all the information down below let me know if you've participated in it uh, also and what did you read and what prompts did you get if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want more fun videos like that make sure you subscribe thank you so much for watching bye